Is your manager asking you this? Well, what's the return on investment from data governance? You probably need to put together a business case for your data governance program and you need to figure out that return on investment. So let's see what the ROI is from data governance. If you're new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Videos are added each week on data management and data governance topics to help you to become a more knowledgeable data professional. Let's be honest, data governance is needed to provide a foundation for any and all data initiatives, all data projects and data-driven decisions. Yes! Like it or not, it's the basis for better data analytics, better data science, AI and machine learning, better understanding of your customers, delivering better services, products, and increasing efficiency. It's really important. However, as demand goes up, budgets are crashing through the floor. Every penny spent needs to be justified with stakeholders. There you go, one penny. Let me see, how much do I have left? Especially now at a time where resources are scarce, which means now more than ever, stakeholders need to see a return on their data governance investment. So we've got this conundrum. If we are going to deliver data governance, it has to deliver a return on investment, an ROI. So what exactly can you expect from implementing data governance within your organization? How does $400 million sound for a return on investment? What? The return could be $400 million or more? Where do I sign? Please stay until the end as I'll go over that story. Until then, what exactly can you expect from implementing data governance within your organization? Well, let's break this down into three categories. Data redundancy, data security, and data quality. Let's start with data redundancy. When there is a lack of data governance, organizations have a higher chance of operating in silos. This occurs when departments or management groups don't share information, goals, tools, priorities, and processes, and of course, data. data. And as such, the same piece of data is stored in more than one system or more than one place in the same system. Research has shown that more than a third of data stored is obsolete or redundant. The gradual impact of redundant data is said to cost you both money and customers. In many instances, this data redundancy is unintentional because departments are unaware of the data practices and data needs of the other departments. What? You're storing this data as well? Other times, this is done intentionally in order to meet different business needs. Uh, no, we actually do need to store this data to meet our other business needs. In both cases, data governance offers the framework, policies, and standards on how to handle and manage these multiple versions of the same data. At the same time, it reduces data redundancy where it doesn't serve a specific business purpose. Let's look at some research. And this research from Experian Data Quality has also shown that the hidden cost of data redundancy could be more than 12% of lost revenue. And a further 21% of businesses will experience damage to their reputation as a result of redundant data. Ah, uh, you, you don't want that. It has also been discovered that more than half of the information stored by businesses is dark, which means that it has no value to daily organizational operations and is just taking up space on your server. But for that, please check out this video on dark data. So data governance can help reduce data redundancy and save you some good money there. So you can definitely put that as part of the ROI. What is this coin? What else can we expect from implementing data governance? Well, it's minimizing security risks. The cost of mismanaging data security can be very damaging to your organization, both in terms of the actual cost and the damage to the reputation. Let's take this one example, and I don't wanna single them out because they're definitely not the only ones, but in October, 2020, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, the OCC, fined Morgan Stanley $60 million for the investment bank's failure to properly oversee the decommissioning of several of its data centers in 2016. A move which the OCC said it put customer data at risk 
of exposure. The OCC stated Morgan Stanley didn't properly manage the third party company it hired to carry out the work and ensure that all personal data was removed. Oh, well, that's not good. So where does data governance come in? Well, while data and information security discipline ensures that the organization's data is safely guarded, data governance ensures that the right people and systems have the right access. It ensures organization-wide data accessibility in a controlled manner, among many other things. It helps us improve data security practices by having the right policies, procedures, standards, and people in place so that we don't put our data at risk while ensuring it's accessible to the right parties. According to the Ponemon Institute's Cost of Data Breach Report, breach data also cost businesses about $150 per compromised record. And this is besides any fines and reputational loss that the company might also incur. Data quality. According to Gardner Research, the average financial impact of poor data quality on organizations is nearly $10 million a year. $10 million. IBM also discovered that in the US alone, businesses lose $3.1 trillion annually due to poor data quality. But more on that again on this video on the cost of bad data quality. Data governance can alleviate a large portion of this by helping the organization create data quality standards that the data needs to adhere to in order to meet business requirements. Ownership and stewardship of the data are established through data governance and with time, hopefully, a cultural change will take place where data quality will be seen as everyone's responsibility. Data governance, you're my only hope. Considering that almost everything relies on data, the cost of its quality trickles in every aspect of the business. From maintaining the same level of service to accurately making business decisions based on operational and forecasting reporting, analytical models, and AI interpretations. Data quality is definitely important. And yes, again, data governance ties in with it very well. So what is the ROI? What is the return on investment from data governance? I recommend looking into your data quality, data security, and data redundancy to start in order to derive some cost savings from these areas. Why? Because these areas definitely have a high impact throughout the organization. But let me give you another story to refer to if you're being asked to put together the return on investment from data governance. In October 2020, the Office of the Control of the Currency has also hit Citibank with a $400 million fine for deficiencies in enterprise-wide risk management, compliance risk management, data governance, and internal controls. You know, just check out this report as it's a very good read and a strong wake-up call for any organization that doesn't have a data governance program in place. If there's ever been an ask for a strong business case of investing or not in data governance, then this is it. If you're asked about the ROI for implementing data governance and you only have time for an elevator pitch, then mention this story. Avoiding a $400 million fine is a great example of the ROI for implementing data governance. Where do I sign? If there was ever an example to make your business case and your pitch stronger for a reason why data governance should be implemented, then this is it. Thank you very much for watching. Please click the like button if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to subscribe to not miss out on the upcoming content. Thank you. Okay, this pen is not a clicker. It's a twister.